HTC smartphones were once a hit, with everyone bragging about having one. So what happened to them and why isn't the public using them as much as they once did? The Glorious Beginning in the evolution of smartphones, HTC rose to glory as leaders in the Android market. Established in 1997, HTC initially produced laptops before shifting their focus to smartphones. This transition began with the launch of the HTC Dream, the first phone powered by Android. By 2011, HTC had become the third largest phone manufacturer globally, trailing only behind Apple and Samsung. In the US, HTC surpassed Samsung to become the top Android phone manufacturer holding a market share of 24%. That year, HTC was crowned the largest smartphone vendor in the United States, capturing an impressive 24% of the market. Their story began on May 15, 1997 in Taiwan, a full decade before the iPhone's debut. The company's name, HTC Corporation, stands for High Tech Computer Corporation. They endeavored to embody that name, consistently striving to innovate and create the next groundbreaking product. They started working on one of the earliest touchscreen smartphones in history in 1998. Furthermore, their goal went beyond creating a more intelligent smartphone. The actual objective was to create a fully functional handheld Windows computer. They would also be successful. They planned to introduce the first smartphone running Windows in the world in 2002. Not only did HTC introduce the first Windows smartphones to the market, but they also introduced the T-Mobile G1, popularly referred to as the HTC Dream, the world's first Android smartphone. And they were not limited to their smartphone innovations. They were significantly advancing the mobile sector as a whole. They contributed to the rise in popularity of 3G in 2005, and a few years later with the release of the HTC Evo 4G, America's first 4G phone. They would aid in the rise of popularity of 4G as well. And after reading this, I doubt it'll surprise you to learn that HTC was recognized as one of the most inventive businesses worldwide in 2010, where HTC was named one of the most innovative companies in the world. It was quickly becoming one of the most valuable smartphone brands in the world too, competing head to head with Apple in the US and Europe with its flagship smartphones. What helped fuel HTC's success was a little piece of software called TouchFlow 3D. TouchFlow 3D was a customizable home screen that took the boring, spreadsheet-like home page for Windows Mobile and turned it into a sleek, useful way to search through contacts, make calls, check your email, and send messages. While Windows Mobile soon died and TouchFlow 3D with it, HTC ported the software to Android and rebranded. Today, we know it as HTC Sense. You would think that as a contemporary tech business operating in a fiercely competitive and quickly changing market like smartphones, that you need to have this exact mentality in order to continuously innovate and advance. I mean, isn't that what Apple accomplished? Not quite though. As you can see, Apple did not truly innovate in technology. When it comes to smartphone advancements, Android typically gets there first, with Apple following years later. But when Apple does it, it's a whole different story because the company frequently innovates not so much in the technology, but rather in the way it delivers it. Take Apple's Face ID, for example, which is so dependable that you might use it without any problems hundreds of times a day and not even notice. They created tiny Bluetooth headphones with a useful battery life, in addition to great sound quality. How they simplify the process of taking high quality photos and films. The true creative power of Apple lies not in the invention of new technology, but rather in the seamless application of pre-existing ones. In reality, HTC was genuinely dedicated to advancing new technology. For example, the HTC Evo 3D was the first smartphone to feature twin rear cameras, a design later adopted by Apple and other phone manufacturers. Similarly, the HTC Thunderbolt was the first phone with LTE capability, preceding Apple and others by years. As a pioneer of Android smartphones and a former leader in the smartphone market, HTC began to lose its way in the middle of the last decade, making some questionable business decisions. Top models, which are not typically the primary revenue source for Android device manufacturers, started to decline after Samsung recognized the importance of this product category. These flagship models are crucial for brand recognition, serving as a company's showcase. The shift. Like many other Androids, HTC faced challenges from rivals like Samsung and Apple. Intense competition, strategic missteps, and internal struggles led to a decline. Sadly, the company could never recover, and it's only experienced straight downhill since then. 
In fact, to characterize their meager 0.9 global market share, you now require two leading zeros. The revived Nokia brand currently holds five times as much market share. HTC's sales fell from $6 billion to less than $2 billion in just four years. Their net worth evolved from being marginally profitable to significantly losing hundreds of millions of dollars annually. In the end, HTC would sell Google a sizable chunk of themselves out of desperation, but this has also produced no results. The situation has gotten so bad that there have been persistent speculations for years that HTC will completely close down its smartphone business. What happened? It's easy to dismiss this sharp fall as the product of Apple and Samsung controlling the market and forming a duopoly, but the tale is far more complex than that. HTC's own choices have a significant role in the company's downfall, but not in the way you might expect. In reality, HTC was setting records year after year in the early stages of their downfall. Simply put, the opposition was setting better record statistics. Therefore, it's more likely that HTC was unable to keep up. Without them, the smartphone business just kept growing at an exponential rate, and eventually this ruined them from the inside out. Samsung's S series began to undermine HTC's flagship offerings by providing more practical solutions at a similar price point. Subsequently, HTC diluted the brand name of its popular desire line by releasing numerous cheaper devices with various extensions to the name. This move tarnished their reputation among many users. While they later produced flagship models under different names, none achieved the same popularity as the desire. During this time, Google acquired part of HTC's phone business and began producing Pixel phones. Some analysts speculate that this move was a strategic effort by Google and HTC to prevent a hostile takeover by Chinese companies. While many attribute HTC's decline to the dominance of Chinese manufacturers who benefit from significantly lower production costs in mainland China compared to Taiwan, HTC's homeland, it's important to note that HTC, like other manufacturers including Apple, also assembles its devices in mainland China. Therefore, the primary blame lies with their management and their poor decisions. Interestingly, several individuals who now work for HMD were formerly with HTC. Furthermore, the HTC M7 was the first phone to feature an aluminium unibody, a design that the iPhone 6 later adopted. While IT experts may have appreciated these innovations, the general public was less enthused. Apple and Samsung's approach of integrating technologies and creating engaging user experiences proved more effective with the broader audience. However, Apple has also faced challenges in maintaining this success. For example, the iPhone 15 is considered one of their least exciting releases. Nevertheless, Apple's diversification strategy has shielded the company from significant impact. HTC also attempted to diversify, but their efforts were less successful. How did they try to get back on their feet? In July 2010, HTC announced a partnership with China Mobile to begin selling HTC-branded smartphones in China. Later, in October 2010, the HTC HD7 was released as one of the initial models for Microsoft revamped Windows Phone. In 2010, they sold over 24.6 million handsets, marking a 111% increase from 2009. In 2013, they spent $1 billion, 800 million pounds, on an extravagant marketing campaign called Here's the Change. This campaign featured quirky elements like a huge tinfoil catamaran and a hipster troll car wash, and included a $12 million, £9 million appearance by Avengers star Robert Downey Jr. At the time, they were trying to recover from the underwhelming sales of the HTC One, which despite winning industry awards, sold fewer units than Samsung's heavily marketed Galaxy S4. They hoped the campaign would restore their status as a global leader in smartphone technology, but it marked the beginning of their decline instead. Robert Downey Jr. has since partnered with the Chinese smartphone company OnePlus, and Chinese consumers have been equally fickle. In May, HTC announced its withdrawal from Chinese e-commerce platforms Alibaba and JD.com. On March 26, 2018, they reported a quarterly net loss of $337 million for the fourth quarter of 2017, attributing this to market competition, product mix, pricing, and recognized inventory write-downs. The financial impact of HTC's deal with Google was expected to be reflected in its first quarter 2018 numbers. They plan to use the revenue to invest in emerging technologies, including increased investments in VR with products like the upcoming Vive Pro model and the Vive Focus, an all-in-one VR headset unveiled in November 2017. Globally, their share of the smartphone market plummeted from 10.7% in 2011 to 0.05% in 2019. 
In the UK, they no longer sell phones through Carphone Warehouse, O2 or EE stores, with their devices now only available through Amazon or direct from their website. Meanwhile, iPhone sales have been declining for several years and Apple has stopped disclosing the number of units sold. However, this has not adversely affected their financials due to their diversification strategy, focusing on revenue from iPhone usage rather than sales. In the smartphone market, Samsung has also thrived behind the scenes. While it's well known for its Galaxy and Note phones, it's also a major player in the display and flash memory markets, even producing displays for iPhones. It's clear that smart diversification may yield significant financial gains, and HTC was aware of this. They've actually been attempting comparable diversification initiatives for more than 10 years, but the results haven't quite turned out as planned. For example, in 2011, they made the $300 million purchase of S3 graphics in an effort to gain more control over the hardware market. S3 graphics had advanced the 3D business significantly, holding hundreds of crucial patents that Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo had licensed for their gaming systems. HTC believed that by acquiring S3 graphics, they could become the industry's leading licensor of smartphone graphics. Around the same time, Google was making a similar move with Motorola, purchasing the company for $12.5 billion, primarily to acquire its 14,600 patents. This acquisition was highly successful as it allowed Google to defend itself against Apple's claims against Android using these patents. HTC likely hoped to counter Apple in a similar fashion, but unfortunately the court ruled in favor of Apple, leading to the eventual disappearance of S3 graphics. Fortunately, years before this, HTC had already been working on other diversification efforts, such as their partnership with Beats by Dre. In 2011, they invested $300 million in Beats, acquiring a 75% stake in the company. However, they decided to prematurely sell this investment, making a modest $56 million profit as their financial situation worsened. Just a year later, Apple acquired Beats for $3 billion. HTC's timing was unfortunate. Although they struggled in the music business, they were early adopters in the streaming space and stayed involved until the end. They invested in two different streaming ventures. The first was OnLive, a game streaming service. OnLive was essentially an early version of Google Stadia, backed by major companies like BT, Warner Brothers and AT&T. However, it failed and was shut down in early 2015, similar to Google Stadia. Fortunately, HTC's other streaming investment fared a little better. Saffron Digital specialized in building and hosting infrastructure used by major players such as Sony, NBC, Paramount, the NFL and the NBA. After the failure of OnLive, HTC took another chance with streaming, but Saffron Digital was eventually sold to New Line. In hindsight, it was probably wise for HTC to refocus on their core offerings. Unfortunately, this turnaround never materialized beyond making misguided innovations and neglecting diversification. Poor marketing was perhaps HTC's biggest downfall. They were not against marketing. In fact, they allocated budgets of up to $1 billion for some campaigns, but their strategies failed to resonate. Celebrities like Robert Downey Jr. were prominently featured in their marketing, with a staggering $12 million paid for a brief commercial. While HTC embraced these strategies, their downfall might have been rooted in inadequate brand positioning. Their approach seemed overly analytical, relying on a belief that offering quality products at fair prices and heavy marketing spend would drive quick sales. However, modern marketing is increasingly about emotional connection rather than rational appeal. Apple exemplifies this approach well, focusing on emotions like exclusivity, premium feel and community through features like FaceTime and iMessage, rather than just product specifications. This emotional appeal has driven the success of brands like Apple and Samsung in selling smartphones. HTC's strategy of cramming technology into their products and their limited diversification efforts contrasted with this emotional marketing trend. For example, their acquisitions like S3 Graphics and subsequent sale of Beats highlighted their tactical missteps. HTC's failures in connecting emotionally with consumers and adapting to market shifts ultimately led to their decline. Despite innovations like EdgeSense and their influential role in smartphone technology, HTC faced internal challenges, including leadership issues and a secretive corporate culture, as reported by former employees. The company's ventures into VR with HTC Vive show promise, but they've struggled to reclaim their former market standing. While they haven't completely abandoned smartphones, their path to recovery remains uncertain amidst a highly competitive market. What does the future look like? Looking ahead, the future for HTC smartphones appears challenging, but it could be transformative. 
Despite the challenges, their future prospects are shaped by several key factors and strategic initiatives. In response to its declining smartphone sales, HTC have been focusing on strategic shifts to regain its footing in the market. One notable move has been its emphasis on virtual reality technology, particularly through its HTC Vive line of VR headsets. The success of the Vive have shown promise, demonstrating that they can innovate and succeed in niche technology markets. This focus on VR aligns with its historical strength in technology innovation, leveraging its expertise to carve out a distinct market position separate from mainstream smartphones. Additionally, they've shown resilience by continuing to release new smartphone models, albeit with a more modest approach. Recent launches of mid-range devices in Taiwan suggest their commitment to maintaining a presence in the smartphone market, even as they face intense competition. Their brand image remains a crucial factor in their future prospects. Historically known for their innovative designs and early adoption of new technologies, like dual cameras, HTC must leverage their brand heritage to differentiate themselves in a crowded market. However, recent marketing mistakes steps and a failure to connect emotionally with consumers have tarnished their brand perception. Rebuilding trust and redefining their brand narrative will be essential for HTC to regain relevance among consumers and industry observers alike. The smartphone industry is fiercely competitive, dominated by giants like Apple and Samsung, as well as aggressive challenges from China like Huawei, Xiaomi and OnePlus. These companies have captured significant market share with competitive pricing, robust feature sets, and effective marketing strategies. HTC's challenge lies in distinguishing itself amid these competitors while addressing consumer preferences for high-quality cameras, innovative features, and seamless user experiences. Diversification beyond smartphones is another avenue HTC have explored. While their ventures into VR have shown promise, the company's ability to expand their footprint in emerging technologies will be critical. This includes potential investments in AI, augmented reality, and Internet of Things, areas where HTC can apply their technological expertise and potentially unlock new revenue streams. Strategic partnerships and collaborations could play a pivotal role in their future. Collaborating with other tech companies, content creators, or even telecoms operators could enhance HTC's product ecosystem and market reach. For example, partnerships with gaming companies for VR content or with telecommunications providers for bundled offerings could strengthen HTC's market position and appeal to niche customer segments. Expanding beyond its traditional markets, particularly in Asia and Europe, could provide growth opportunities for HTC. Focusing on markets where it still retains brand equity and consumer loyalty could help stabilize its revenue streams and pave the way for future growth. This expansion should be accompanied by tailored marketing strategies and localized product offerings to resonate with diverse consumer preferences and market dynamics. Innovation remains the cornerstone of HTC's potential resurgence. Continuing to pioneer new technologies, refine existing features, and deliver products that meet evolving consumer needs will be crucial. HTC's ability to differentiate its offerings through unique features, superior build quality, and user-centric design will determine its competitiveness in the marketplace. The bottom line. The future of HTC smartphones hinges on its ability to navigate a highly competitive and rapidly evolving industry landscape. While challenges persist, HTC possesses strengths in technological innovation, brand heritage, and niche market opportunities, particularly in VR. By focusing on these strengths, rebuilding their brand image, and exploring new growth avenues through partnerships and diversification, HTC can chart a path toward recovery and renewed relevance in the global smartphone market. Successfully executing these strategies will require HTC to address internal challenges, embrace consumer insights, and adapt swiftly to market dynamics. Ultimately, their ability to innovate, differentiate, and effectively communicate their value proposition to consumers will determine whether they can reclaim their position as a respected player in the smartphone industry. Do you think there's a future where HTC phones make a comeback? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.